I put the <clears throat> strike side in and tested everything. I've got the time side in testing everything without any springs in so that I can turn <clears throat> and see if I need any bushings. And one good way to check is if you put pressure on like you had a, like you were the spring and you can watch your bushings go sideways. They shouldn't have any side to side motion. This one and this one, if you watch them, they definitely go side to side. Um, to a lesser extent as the pressure comes off of the spring, <clears throat> but basically I'm gonna end up having to do bushings on. Here's the same one on the other side. And this one. So I'm gonna do bushings on front and back on all of these. So I've got my bushing machine set up. It's pretty fast and easy with one. I can actually do all these in one day. <coughs> so I'll get it set up and show you. I'll show you this machine here in a second. I've done two of these. And um, after you do, oh goody, it's coming apart. Hang on, let me put this back together because I want to show you something. Okay, so anyway, this is what I want to show you. I have two of them in. <clears throat> so before when I put pressure on this, this would go side to side and side to side. But they're not anymore, but I can evaluate <clears throat> whether I need to do these other two on this time side now that I've got these two in better position. And this one's going up and down and this one's going side to side. So I do need to do them. <clears throat> Sometimes you have to look closely, but they need to be done also. Um, so there's three ways that I know of to do bushings. And one way, the way most of us start out is with cutting brooches. You buy a variety pack. <clears throat> and <clears throat> you mark on it to measure with your calipers. Measure the end of a wheel. Measure with your calipers. Make a mark or put a piece of tape. And then... <clears throat> now it won't come apart. Okay. And then from the inside, you broach out the hole. And you keep, try to keep it straight. There's little holders for these, of course, handles. Um, <clears throat> you try to keep it perpendicular. And it's real easy to make mistakes, get off at an angle a little bit, and you have some pressure on your wheel when you test it and put it in there. You should be able to, after you do it, you're going to test each side of the wheel. That's not the hole that one goes in. Each side of the wheel and make sure that um, when you have it together you've got in shake that it's not binding. Sometimes you can slide it forward and it'll stick. It's too tight then. <clears throat> so cutting brooches, smoothing brooches to smooth out what you've cut. If it's a little bit too tight, if it's binding like I was just talking about, you're going to take a smoothing brooch and go inside that hole and smooth it out. <clears throat> and you can also burnish your pivot holes with these smoothing brooches. So they're really good to have. Um, even if you weren't putting in any bushings, you could burnish the insides of your pivot holes. We kind of do that with toothpicks when we get done cleaning our movement. We go into each hole and clean it. But if you really wanted a nice slick, I've seen pictures of, of pivot holes that were burnished compared to ones that weren't. And I mean, they look like hand polished little tunnels, man. They look smooth. <clears throat> Sorry about this frog in my throat. Okay, so that is that is one way to do bushings all by hand. The second way is also by hand, but you get a little dealy like this, and you and they make sets of these reamers in different sizes. <clears throat> and it doesn't matter if you go with KWM or you go with Birch Birgion, I think is the other company. I don't know how to say it. It's French. Um, I went with the German made because, you know, I feel like I've got German background and I think we hard-headed Germans do things the right way. So, <laughs> anyway, um, it's similar to what you do with, 
that won't go in there. This must not be the handle for that. Um, I've got some, I've got several sets of these now that just came with this, and um, they don't all fit in the handheld one. <coughs> so, um, you would do the same thing. You would measure your wheel. You would look at a chart. You would measure your plate thickness. You would find your wheel pivot size. You would come across and see what size bushing you need. And then you look up and it shows you what size of reamer you need. Um, so, same as the cutting brooch, you're trying to hold it perpendicular to the plate, not get off at any angle. But it's nice because it's going to make it the right size diameter for the bushing that you're going to put in. You can't go too far where with these you're marking them and you and hopefully you measured right. The first three I cut, I cut too big even though I had measured it because I measured on the flat surfaces instead of turning it when I measured. And so when you turn it when you measure, you're actually measuring it's going to cut all the way to the wider sides of the of the point because it's flat. It's five-sided. Um, so you need to kind of spin it in your calipers when you're measuring to get the actual size of what your hole is going to be. So then the third method, which is supposed to be the easiest, but I still managed to mess that up today. Um, <clears throat> this machine came with my tools and um, all my pivots. I mean, so, excuse me, I can't think straight. All of my bushings are in these little things. So you take your wheel, you slip it into the hole, and you see which one fits. And that's what size bushing you go with. So it's a 1.6 millimeter at the end there. Um, and you go over to your plate size, and you go, okay, I need a, a 20 bushing. And then it's got a little numeral right there. It tells me the number three reamer. So it tells me what size reamer I need. I know for sure this is going to fit in there. You know, you can just start and work your way down. And then it was kind of sticking in that one. So I was like, should I go up a size? I'd rather have it a little bit tighter. But it was not free spinning. Like you want it to be able to spin. You don't want it super tight. You don't want it holding your, your wheel, keeping it from spinning. <clears throat> but um, I did opt for the smaller size, put the bushing in, and then use the smoothing brooch to open it back up a little bit so that it, it spun like it was supposed to. So um, we're going to work on, we've done, I've done this wheel and this wheel, I'm going to work on this wheel now. And I would suggest you take some kind of Sharpie or, or marker of some kind. That's still not in the right spot. And mark which hole you're working on. Because it's still very easy to get turned around. So I'm working on this hole on both of these plates. So I put a little mark on there. Um, I always measure both sides of the wheel because sometimes one's got wear or been polished more than another. So if I go with the 1.2, I'm going to have to smoothing broach it out a little bit. Um, even if I go with the 1.3, I still may have to open it back up some because as you as you put the bushing into the plate, sometimes it compresses the inner hole a little bit. So, all right, I'm just going to go ahead and show you how I do one of these all the way through. So 1.3, I'm going to go with 1.3, so 1.2 is just too snug. 
So 1.3, <clears throat> which is number 17 on a 1.4 millimeter plate. So number 17. is here and this one it's got all the numbers of what's in here and to find bushing number 17 and all of these you'll see there's bunches and bunches and bunches all in here 17 is one seven <clears throat> the last number is going to be along the top row the so first number is down here second number across here and if it's like 102 it's still going to be you're going to go to 2 and then you're going to go to 10 this is 1 through 0 through 5 on this one the other one has 6 through 10 on it so it's got the higher numbers um, but no matter what bushing size you're getting take the last number that's what column you're going to be in so I need 17 so I'm going to push this over to column number 7 and that's one seven right here so th that's the ones I need so I'm gonna get two of those out they're hard to catch I got some little hemostats I'm catching them with so I can put this back up and not spill them everywhere because I would really hate to have to measure them all Okay, so I'm going to start with the back plate. Still working from the inside. And the first step of this one is to put the, there's a little pointy piece on there, and that's your centering tool. What I like about the KWM is it just slips in, and then there's a slot going this way. You just turn it sideways, either direction, and you're ready to go. The Birchion set, you have to sit there with a little screwdriver and attach and detach each one. And you and it takes four different, three different, four different things to do each bushing. So you're constantly changing out pieces. So this is a lot more convenient. Okay, I'm going to find my little hole that I was marked. Get up in this top corner. Sometimes it's tricky with all these posts. Lower this down. Okay, so I've got it centered in the hole, <clears throat> and this is holding it, so I can bring my plate up. This knob adjusts for sliding back and forth. This knob tightens this. When you loosen this, you can change your angle on these. So I'm gonna snug those down. And when you loosen all of this, it, this has a spring underneath. It lets this come up and rest on the plate. So I've got it against my staking block type thing down here. There's different size ones. And I picked one that, um, I think my arm's in the way. I picked one that had a hole big enough that my bushing could go down in it and stick out the other side if it needed to. I want it flush on the inside. So I've got all of this secure, so I can take my centering tool out, and I'm going to go with, I laid it down somewhere, here it is, <laughs> trying to show you stuff and I'm losing my tools. So this is the number three reamer. And I said even with this you can mess up because I haven't used this in a while and I didn't remember that I didn't have a number one. So when I was counting over to number three, I went, I went one, two, three, and this must be number three. And so I reamed my hole out and it was number four. So since then I've written on my board so I don't forget again. Um, <clears throat> had to put a... On this one I had to put a bushing that would hold my bushing and then my bushing I put two bushings in the first hole that I drilled because I used the number four reamer instead of the number three all right so you just go into the hole and start turning not a ton of pressure I mean I can do it with one finger 
And the good part about it is your hands don't get super tired doing it this way. When I've done an entire clock plate, it took me probably two days. I did probably one side of it one day and then the other side the next day because that's eight bushings. That's a lot of hand turning on them. This little handle here, or this little thing with a handle. I mean, it's it's a lot of holding small things and turning, so it makes it a lot easier to have a machine that will make the hole faster for you and cleaner. You know it's perpendicular. All right, so then your next step is to put a chamfer in and just take off any sharp edge there. Okay, and then my little tiny bushing, which should have a little depression you can see on that side. That side's pretty flat. That side's got a little dip in it. So the little dip goes down. That's your oil sink. You want it on the outside of the clock. to get these sitting in the hole. There we go. And then you use a pusher, solid surface, and this just advances on and pushes down. You can feel it pop in. You can go back and push a little more. Now I feel like it's flush and that one's done. So Loosen all this back up. Try my wheel. This is the bottom, so it points this way. And there we go. And I'll put the top on, and I'll put my other two wheels on, and I'll make sure everything has got play like it's supposed to. And I'll go on to the, the front side. So I do this for every one, every bushing that I put in. I put the movement to plates together, put the one in that I've done, spin it, make sure I've got in shake, because you'll find out right away if you've got your bushing at a little bit of an angle or it has squeezed in and made it a little bit tight. Um, and you'll know exactly which one you need to work on. It's a whole lot easier than doing both of them and going, well, which one is it? Why is it not turning? So take time to, to double check. So the escapement wheel was one of those. See, I don't have much, I don't have any in shake right now. It was one of those that when I measured the two ends, they were different. So the bottom, 0.17, no problem. Won't go in 0.16, it's tight. At the top, top easily goes in the next size down and spins. So I put a 1.7 bushing in the bottom and a 1.6 in the top. And then when I put it together you saw I had no end shake, right? So it's kind of in between, it's like 0 0.05 millimeters difference. So that's where the smoothing brooch comes in. The bottom is good. It spins the top. And this is why I put a dot because all these holes start to look alike after a little while when you're flipping plates back and forth. It's a little bit snug. It spun in my measurer okay, but it does not spin in here like it should. So that's where I take my smoothing brooch and go in. Oh, that's a cutter. I'm pretty sure I got the cutter because the last one, I don't, I think I'm missing one size of the smoothing brooch. I go from, from this one to a teeny tiny one. 
There's a lot of difference between those two, so I feel like I'm missing the one that's right in the middle there. And this bigger one won't quite fit. And the smaller one will fit, but it goes all the way to the hub. So what I did with the other one that I did that was similar to this was a little bit too small. I did, I did the cutting brooch very gently till it just started to go. And then the smoothing brooch would fit. And it's trial and error. You're going to just take a little tiny bits at a time if you need to adjust it. I'm going to take a little bit more off. You don't want to take a whole lot off because these bushings are <clears throat> graduated so that when you tap them down in there, they're bigger on one side than the other so it holds them in the clock. So the more you do things like this, they say don't broach them after you put them in because they'll start spinning and getting loose on you but if it, your hole doesn't you know if your if your pivot doesn't fit you gotta do something to make it fit right all right and that's all it took was half a dozen turns and it's nice and loose now So spinning well, good in shake now where it wouldn't do it at all before. Alright, so this time side is done. I'm going to do the strike side next. Then I'm going to have to get all my fingerprints back off of this thing. <laughs> I was able to get the arbor to catch and get my springs wound and my clamps back on. I've got the pieces in. Just loosely sitting there. That's not a good spot. Um, what I've tried to line up is this piece in the slot well. And this pin a little distance off of here. I looked at my pictures to see how much pie shaped piece I could see on the outside of the of the frame. So I'm going to try to put the top on. And get it put back together. I usually go on this wheel to where the uh, 1230, 1 o'clock, 130 extra, extra uh, single slots are because I have a better shot of getting my, my little um, count wheel lever in a slot. So you want this in a deep slot when you've got all this set up. And it looks like it's going to go down in there pretty good. But I won't know until I get it completely perpendicular. So that's why I put four choices there. That's the best shot I've got of getting them in there. And um, usually you can start at the bottom. These are moving nice and easy now. When you have two levers like this, make sure inside there you've got one on each side of the wheel with the pins on it. I didn't when I put this together the first time. I put it together to, to try it without um, my springs on there. And so here's your two gong levers right here. And this third wheel with the pins on it. You need to make sure that, that there's one on each side of that or you'll be taking it all back apart. So I can get um, a couple nuts on here loosely and start getting my 
my pivots in the holes. I'm trying to do this left handed. I'm not a lefty. I'm a little bit ambidextrous, but because I broke my right arm twice when I was a kid, so I was in a sling for six weeks, the first time in a cast in a sling, and couldn't use my hand. So I learned to write left-handed. Um, and then I was out of the cast for two weeks, and I did a cartwheel, and it hadn't healed right, and it broke again, so then I was in a cast for eight weeks. So that was my entire summer that year between second grade and third grade. I broke it at the very end of second grade and was still in a cast until it was time to go back to third grade, basically. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna be able to get a nut on here. I think it's gonna put too much pressure. So I'm gonna start getting some things lined up. And I uh, will do as much as I can, just wiggle in by hand before I get in there with any tools. You're going to put more pressure on with a tool than you will with your fingers. This is already turned, so before I get it locked down, I want to get it back where I want it. This guy is usually the culprit, the wheel with the pins. Make sure you're under that tab before you lock it down or you'll be opening it back up to get it under the tab. I don't see what I'm hitting that's keeping this from going down. spring is pushing my wheel over some and making me having trouble lining it up. I will be back when I get all of it put together. I got this back together and put it on the test stand overnight just to see if it would run overnight and I was excited to see that it was still ticking this morning. A um, couple of challenges in getting it in the strike sequence to shut off properly. I thought it would be easier because there was just the one one rod in here. Where are you? One rod right here that had the three arms on it. I thought, well, that's easier than the two arms with three arms on each one getting it synchronized. But it was not super easy. Um, it was not shutting off when I first put it together. So normally you can take this third wheel with the warning pins and slide the top out and spin this cam wheel where you need it, but this one would not do that. It wouldn't disengage. The only way to make any adjustments, because I tried adjusting this to get it to seat deeper, my, um, my timing of my count wheel lever going into a deep slot and my lever up here falling into the cam was off so I tried adjusting this first because that would be the easiest I loosened up the screw and tried to lift it forward a little bit and just slide this it wouldn't disengage the um, gear is too wide in there I didn't have enough room and I already had power on the springs I didn't want to let all the spring power down but I did have to let all the spring power down because I had to go up here and um, and I push this little, whoop, where are you? Push this little tab up right here, loosen the screws up top and at the bottom down there. And <clears throat> I was able to slip this third wheel, fourth, second wheel, let's see. 
great wheel, first wheel, second wheel. All right, so the second wheel with the cam, I had to um, separate the plates a little bit and then I could get this out from under here and spin it where I needed and put it back in. But to keep everything from moving in the meantime is why I have this long stick. There's holes in your case. You can um, find something that will fit in through there and that will keep your <clears throat> wheels from turning while you're making adjustments. So that's what I ended up doing and I got the um, strike to shut off nicely. Um, what else? So I think I'm ready to put it back in the stand, I mean in the case and see how it goes. I don't really have a good stand for this. The, the gong arms are free to swing on this. Um, but my spring, yeah, there's still room on the spring. Um, so this works, I guess. I normally put a movement like this on my flat plate, like so. But it doesn't have a hole in it, so. This one, well, I would have had to mount to the flat plate and I would have had to drill a hole for the, the minute hand arbor to come out an hour or two. So I checked this one out and it worked decently overnight. <clears throat> it's not super, super steady in there. It can move. So um, I'm going to put it in the case and make final adjustments there. All right, pendulum is on. It's tightened in the case. I adjusted the gongs. They do bend a little bit if you need to bend them left or right, up or down to get them the right depth. I put them a little space above where they're not resting on the on the chime rods so that they have a clear sound. So I'm going to turn the hands. Do the half hour. Went into warning. So I need to put the dial back on from the front side. See the strike levers lift count wheel. Notice it's going in the center of the slot. It's not rubbing on either side. That's important when it's counting. It shouldn't be hitting on the top of the teeth. It should be hitting in the groove of the short teeth and it should go all the way to the bottom of the deep groove teeth. And shuts off nicely. And I got the new door installed. Time is all set. I'm gonna go set it in the other room and let it run and see if I need to speed it up or slow it down. There's a little keyhole right here for adjusting that. Um, the pendulum bob is a little more labor intensive you have to take it off and there's a screw on the back that slides the pendulum up and down um, so I put it kind of in the middle and where it looked like there was a mark from where it had been used previously and um, I'm going to set this up and see how it goes but anyway this project hopefully is all done Put it here on the mantle for a temporary home. The strike went off on its own. First time in a million years. Gongs sound good. They were frozen up solid, wouldn't move. So anyway, this is its temporary home for a while till it goes up for auction. And um, thanks for watching.